What's up gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to compare three of the places that I have lived. Latin America, Southeast Asia, and Eastern Europe. Now, before we get into that, smash like button, it costs you nothing, it means the world to me, it really helps me out with the algorithm. And if you are interested in this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And with all that good stuff out of the way, let's get into the topic of this video. As I have already mentioned, I have a unique perspective on this, seeing as I have residency in all three parts of the, the world, in all three of these parts of the world, and I've lived in these places for a long period of time. So once again, I have a very unique perspective on this particular situation. And so let's go ahead and dive into the pros and cons of each of these different places. So we are going to get started, in my personal opinion, with probably the best place if you're looking simply for pure value, and that is going to be Southeast Asia. Also, one disclaimer, these, all of these places that I'm talking about, Latin America is a huge portion of the world. Like, and since you're talking about specific region, regions in the world, there's going to be some generalizations in this video because I'm not going to go through every single country and compare and contrast to them. But in general, all of these regions have certain generalizations that you can say apply to most of the countries in these particular regions. Okay, so with that said, Southeast Asia, from a value proposition, if you've last watched my last couple of videos, it's simply unmatched. There is nowhere else in the world where you can get a high-rise condo in a luxury type building that has fast elevators, high quality amenities, face scanning, 24 seven security, and infinity pools for, you know, 600 bucks a month. 650 750 bucks a month it's just not happening anywhere else in the world yeah there are other places in the world that have those things to offer but they don't reach the standard of what you get in a place like bangkok i'm sorry it just simply doesn't happen and that is the fact of the matter now that's not to say there aren't other issues with southeast asia but from a value perspective it is simply unmatched the food is really great. What is that? Food, super great, super safe. And the only real issues with a place like Southeast Asia is gonna be something like the weather, right? Because it can be a bit humid. It could be a bit unbearable. There's not different seasons in a place like Southeast Asia. Well, I mean, there are technically seasons like rainy season or not rainy season. But for the most part, you're not going to have like snow and then you're not going to have like a autumn or winter or fall kind of thing. It is pretty much same temperature all year round. Once again, this is a generalization. OK, so obviously there are some different um, extremes that could be within this. OK. And then from there, let's go ahead and go to the, and then from there, let's go to Eastern Europe. Now, before everyone rips my head off, in general, when I say Eastern Europe, I'm talking about Central Europe. So anywhere pretty much east of Germany and Italy, for the most part, is Eastern Europe, although technically it is not Eastern Europe, and some of the people, such as the Polish people and probably the people in the Baltic states and other people in this region, might get a little bit offended if you say Eastern Europe. But for the purpose of this particular YouTube video, where I'm talking to primarily Americans who, in general, aren't super great at identifying where countries are, and on top of that, you know. Americans are Googling Eastern Europe. They're not Googling Central Europe or the Baltic states. Like most Americans can't even like point out the Baltic states. They probably don't even know what the Baltic states are. So for reasons of satisfying the algorithm, Eastern Europe is what I am going to call 
this portion of the world. So, with that said, um, like I said, it's pretty much everywhere east of Germany, even though that is not technically the definition. So, Eastern Europe is going to be a little bit better value than, or, so Eastern Europe, still really good value, not as, not quite as good value as a place like Southeast Asia. And it's still going to be extremely safe. It is also going to be less of a culture shock than a place like Southeast Asia, once again, lumping in a lot of places in Southeast Asia. But for the most part, Eastern Europe is not going to be radically different. I mean, obviously, if you go to a place like Russia, yes, going to be radically different for the most part. And this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because a lot of these places in Eastern Europe speak English. But since we're generalizing a broad range, it, it's hard to really make that comment because some of these places have extremely high levels of English while other places have pretty low levels of English. So keep that in mind when you hear me say something like that. Like a place like um, the Baltic States, Poland, probably a little bit higher level of English than a place like Moldova. But yeah, keep that in mind. And then what else can we say safety pretty good throughout this entire region and I will also have to say on a value spectrum way better value in places in Eastern Europe than you're going to get in Western Europe and there's a number of reasons for that but as of now at least there is a lot more value to be had in these Eastern European countries specifically you know, the top of my mind, Prague, although a little bit more expensive in the Eastern Europe hemisphere, shall I say, gonna be pretty good value, amazing city, Budapest, uh, Warsaw, where I am right now, really good value, and then you have places in, like, the Baltic States, and then you have a place like Chisinau, which is on the rise to, to some extent, you have places like, what, Bucharest in Romania, or Romania at, in general. We could, we'll be able to see what happens in Ukraine over, um, you know, the next couple of years, or however long that situation takes to develop. And then, what, I mean, there's just so many other places that uh, I'm probably blanking on off the top of my head, but most of those places are going to be uh, where I would generally... Uh, look into. Now, here is the issue with a place like Eastern Europe. It is the weather for me. I like warm weather. So you can see we have a nice sunny day here in Warsaw. We're towards the end of summer, but you definitely have seasons in a place like this. And it's going to get rainy. It's going to get cloudy. The sun is going to disappear for months at a time, and so you really won't be able to enjoy a day like this because there won't be days like this coming up very soon. And so that's kind of, it's kind of the polar opposite of Asia, where Asia is going to be pretty warm and humid all the time. And then in Europe, or Eastern Europe, I should say, you're probably going to get three to four good months of weather, and then the rest of the year, not going to be so great. So, kind of depends on who you are. Like, I don't really care to have a bunch of different seasons. And part of my lifestyle, for example, is if I do want to experience different seasons, well, then I will just go travel when I want to experience a different season. In general, I like being in the sun, and yeah. So that one is kind of up to you and your preferences, right? And then finally, we have Latin America. Good old Latin America. Once again, gonna have to generalize for the purpose of this video. Latin America, I would say, is kind of like a hybrid between Europe and or between Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia. 
So I would say there is, you know, depending on the country in Latin America, there is more value to be had. However, not going to be as safe. So on a value spectrum, it's probably in middle of Asia and Eastern Europe. And then on a safety perspective, it is going to be, in general, the least safe of the three. But once again, great value. And then obviously there's the benefit of the time zone. So the time zone is important to some people. The accessibility is another thing that is pretty important. And I find that most Americans that do speak a different language in general probably speak Spanish and so that could also be one other barrier and that's another um, thing that I should mention so on a language barrier and culture shock barrier so language wise um, the level of English probably not as good as a place like Eastern Europe in general but probably higher than a place like Southeast Asia, once again, in general, because you have other countries in Southeast Asia which have extremely high levels of English, like Malaysia, the Philippines come to mind. So I would say it's in the middle there. And then on a culture shock level, probably going to be the least amount of culture shock of the places that I have listed here on the culture shock spectrum least is going to be a place like latin america then you're going to have eastern europe and then asia is probably going to be the largest culture shock for most people i would say in that order and then depending where in latin america you are the weather probably going to be less seasonal than a place like eastern europe but that doesn't mean there are no places that don't have seasons period in Latin America, but in general, they're going to be a little bit warmer, a little bit more um, tropical, and once again, gets a little tricky. I will also say best beaches are, are gonna be in Southeast Asia and Latin America, in my personal opinion, out of the three places we are talking about in this video. Now, finally, we are going to do a little bit more of a comparison and this is where many of you are probably going to want to click away from this video. We are going to talk about economics and women. So let's start with economics. Economically, Latin America probably has the worst economic outlook out of all of these regions. Once again, you're comparing a lot of different countries to a lot of different other countries and things can change rapidly as we've seen with a place like El Salvador and maybe even Argentina and yeah so things could rapidly change but as of now for the most part Latin America probably has the worst out economic outlook or future although this is something that you really have to go country by country. I don't even really want to lump, lump it in like this because um, there's just so many different factors, right? So that is something to be aware of. The best economic outlook, in my personal opinion, is probably going to be a place like Southeast Asia. A lot of room for growth, and um, there's just a lot of potential that could be had in Southeast Asia. Once again, they have to do things right, and they need to continue to do things right. Like a place like Georgia, for example, was doing things right, and then they stopped doing things right, and so they were on an upward tra trajectory like this, and now it's not doing so hot. They just passed a few laws that are not very libertarian. Let's go ahead and make that the best way I can put it without getting demonetized. So you can do your own research into that. And then Eastern Europe is, I would say like the stable middle. So most of those places have joined the EU and they have experienced a significant boon in their 
economies because of that. Um, with that said, a lot of these places have different economic outlooks in the future. And a lot of it depends on who their leader is and the political party in office and if they make any changes or what may have you. Because as many of you know, oftentimes when a country starts to do really well, someone comes in and changes a bunch of policies and then it starts going back down. So that is one reason to, one thing to be aware of. Also, as it relates to economics, and this is part of why the value is so much better in some of these places, is that most places in Eastern Europe have a stronger currency than the Southeast Asian currencies or the Latin American currencies. So you get more geo arbitrage of your US dollar in comparison to a place like Eastern Europe in Latin America and Southeast Asia, which also obviously affects the value equation. The moment you all have been waiting for is finally here. If you don't want to hear talk about women and dating, then it is time to shut this video off. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. For those of you who are still here, then here is what I will say. I will say it really depends on what you're looking for is one of the first factors and the type of women that you like. In general, the Latin American women, in my personal opinion, are going to be the most attractive, but it depends on the type of body you like. I like short girls with huge butts, okay? I don't like fat girls. I like them short with huge butts and kind of like the Coke bo bottle figure. Flat tummies, big butts. That's what I like. So for me, that's why Latin America has the most attractive women. They tend to be a little bit more fiery, that is for sure, or passionate, should we say. And for the most part, they tend to be a little bit, um, uh, let's say, more open-minded when it comes to dating. They aren't going to be super conservative. and But they will, for the most part, in my personal experience, have a little bit more of femininity to them as well. And not necessarily traditional values. I mean, I hate using that term. Uh, God, I, I just want to punch myself for even saying that. But when it comes to masculine and feminine roles, in general, they do respect the kind of role. And they also value the family unit for the most part. It gets a little bit tricky because um, various different factors. But for the most part, if you find a good woman, she is going to, you know, value family very highly. Next, we're going to go to Eastern Europe. Now, this is probably going to be the most difficult. And difficult, I, and I say difficult because I would say most of these women, more traditional. There I go again. And probably looking for more long-term relationship type stuff and so they're probably a little bit mm, less open-minded to dating foreigners out of these three places because they are looking for someone with stability that someone that relates to their culture respects their culture understands their culture whereas that's not really a consideration in most of latin america but if you're looking for a wife, it would probably be one of the better options to look for a wife in. Now, the thing with Eastern Europe, the women in general, going to be pasty white. So, I mean, once again, it gets tricky because in like the, what is that, Southeast, like Moldova, they look a little bit more... Uh, maybe like olive colored 
is probably the most gentle way I can put it. And then you also get a little bit of a central Asian look in some of these places as well. Like I've met a few women in Warsaw from like Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and uh, I don't know, other places. So yeah, that is another thing to be aware of. But I would say they are very attractive in the face, but just draw a stick figure for a body and that is what they essentially have to offer here. And that, once again, that is a massive generalization, okay? Massive, massive generalization. Which is more like the uh, model, model type. Because models, in general, have to be super skinny and tall. Not a lot of curves there. And then finally, you have Asians. Which, or you have Southeast Asians. Which are kind of like a mixture of both, I would say. Hard, hard to put it into words. So, South, Southeast Asians, a little bit more open-minded to dating foreigners, but they are really searching for relationships for the most part. But the difference is, they're going to be searching for a relationship, but they're still going to be open-minded towards bedroom activity early in the relationship. I'm not saying you can't find that in Eastern European cultures, but I would probably guess that... Eastern European women probably have one of the lower body counts, if I had to guess. That's not a, like, real question I am quizzing people on. So, that would be the thing that I say there. Asian women are, for me, probably second, because, once again, I don't like taller women. So, and I'm, like, mm, I like lighter-skinned women, but their body type just doesn't do it for me and frankly that's why Asians aren't super high on my list either because most of them are short but they don't have a ton of curves although I have talked about some of the countries that have that are maybe a little bit more exceptions to the rule like um, South Korea is like the Latin America of Asia in my personal opinion but um, yeah, let's not get too deep down that particular rabbit hole. Sums it up for me, but obviously we are all different. And so that is going to impact your experience of what you are searching for. And I've probably mentioned it in other videos. Like, if you only like white girls, well, don't go to Latin America or Southeast Asia. I mean, Latin America maybe because you get some of the more white girls in some different areas of Latin America but if you're looking for like you know the Swedish blonde hair blue hair white look then don't go to Latin America if you like Asians don't go to either of those other places right so it really depends on you and who you are and yeah that's gonna wrap up this video that is going to touch on most of my thoughts on the differences between these three parts of the world and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below what did i get right what did i get wrong what has your experience been and i will see you guys next time and as always peace much love